I want to talk to you for a minute, number one, about why the two-state solution is satanic, number two, why it cannot possibly work. Uh, a lot of people out there that are serving the devil, and they try to say that there, there should be a two-state solution. The Palestinians and the, and the Israelis, you know, they should agree to disagree and, you know, just live together in peace and harmony. Uh, you're rather retarded if you say that, just to be very blunt about it. Um, they've been fighting for thousands of years, but now all of a sudden we're so enlightened and so modern and everything else that they can just get along over there somehow. Never going to happen. Uh, One-worlders are perpetual optimists, opium dream opti optimists, I should say it that way, opium pipe dream optimists. Say it that way. They're crazy in the head. Cuckoo. They think that people can get along. People can't get along. Thousands of years of history have proved that man... Uh, likes war and likes to kill and likes to fight and rape and pillage and whatever else. That's just the truth of man. But I'm going to show you why in the New Testament, we're not even going to go back to Old Testament things about the nation of Israel, but why in the New Testament this thing of, well, the Palestinians have a right to their land and whatever else, that is nonsense. And I see people that claim to be, we're Palestinian Christians, and yet they're still in the land. They're not leaving the land. They're not Christians. Galatians chapter 4, verse 21 through verse 31. New Testament. Okay? Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was born of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. Spelled it. A-G-A-R in the New Testament is, you know, the name coming into Greek, you know, from Greek into English, excuse me. New Testament was written in Greek. And the Old Testament was Hagar with an H in front because it's Hebrew coming into English. Verse 25, for this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou, barren, that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Written nearly 2,000 years ago, and yet it's still true to this very day. They're still fighting over there. The Arabs still do persecute the Jewish people. You say, well, the Jews over there in Israel, they're, they're, they're from Japheth. They're actually white Europeans. Then why are they fighting? White Europeans can get along with Arabs. Do you ever think about that? It's kind of weird. They fulfill exactly what the Bible says, these Jews in Israel. And yet they're, they're white Europeans. Sure, okay, replacement theology heretics. I don't think so. Verse 30, Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Oh, the Palestinians have a right to the land. Well, if you don't believe in the Bible, then yeah, they do. But if you're a Bible-believing Christian, or if you at least acknowledge the Scriptures, whatever, they have no right to that land over there. The Gaza Strip and the West Bank and all the other stuff, get out. You're Palestinian, out you go. That's what's going to happen. Verse 31, to finish up here. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. I'm born in with the spirit of adoption. You see? My ancestors are from Germany, not Israel. But I support the nation of Israel and the Jewish right to be in that land. And the fact that Jerusalem is their capital city always has been. But you get a bunch of Muslims coming in there, a bunch of Arabs coming in there, and they steal the land from the Jewish people through war and everything else. And now they're claiming this is our land. This is our native land and everything else. It is not their native land. And I'm going to tell you, give you a little bit of prophecy for the future. All Palestinians are going to be wiped out. They're going to be going out of there. There will be no two-state solution. Uh, that is a joke. It's satanic because it's, a, it's just a joke. It's, it's ridiculous. It's a bunch of stupid liberal people out there coming out and saying, oh, we got this two-state solution. They're never going to pass anything of the kind. 
God is going to bring war to that region. And unfortunately, Israel is going to sign a covenant with death with the Roman Catholic Church. There will be an agreement in the future, a future pope, I believe the Antichrist, is probably going to be next after Francis is dead and gone uh, and in hell with all the other popes. This future pope is going to sign an agreement between the Vatican and Israel, not between the Jews and the Muslims, right, for a peace treaty. That is a false teaching. It appears nowhere in Scripture. Look it up. Where does it say anything? It says about he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, back in the book of Daniel, chapter 9. It doesn't say anything about Jews and Muslims. This teaching has been perpetuated for so long that there's going to be this two-state solution or this, this peace between the Jews and the Muslims and things. That is nonsense. It's a covenant that is signed. It's, they're confirming the covenant. That covenant with death, the Bible also talks about that, is going to be between the Vatican and the nation of Israel. And the Vatican is going to get control over the city of Jerusalem. It's already called an international city. Why do you think all the embassies are going there? Think it out, people. All the embassies are moving. I shouldn't say all, but a lot of them. It's becoming hip and trendy. America came, you know, now and just a few days ago, May 14th here, 2018. America's now, we got our embassy relocated to Jerusalem. Yeah, eventually all the other countries are going to follow suit and it's going to be an international city. Why? Because Matthew chapter 5 says that Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Even the, their flag of Jerusalem, this is the official flag right here behind me, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right there. Jerusalem, international city. The Vatican gets control over the international city. Eventually the temple was rebuilt there and everything else. The Pope's going to sit in that temple one day and claim himself to be God. I mean, if you study Roman Catholicism, you look at the Catechism, they already do claim the title of God for the Pope. He is Christ on earth. God on earth, in other words. And that agreement, well, you say, why would, why would Israel give up you know, their capital city and why would they do this and things and sign this, you know, confirm this covenant with the Vatican? Why? Because the Vatican is going to promise the destruction, total destruction of Islam. Why do you think all the wars with Muslim countries, more wars to come? What they're going to do is they're going to instigate Islam to do something stupid. Um, the Winslow plan, you can look at that. Probably going to bomb Mecca and Medina, blow them up. And the Muslims that are remaining are just going to go crazy and they're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. And the Antichrist, at some point in time, is going to come in and he's going to make war on Islam as part of the covenant between him and the Catholic Church, and the Jews. And thankfully, the body of Christ is going to be leaving before the Antichrist is revealed. Uh, again, I've proved that in many studies. The body of Christ is in heaven in Revelation chapter 5, called up in Revelation chapter 4, in heaven Revelation chapter 5, 24 elders, and a great multitude of angels. In the resurrection there is the angels of God. We're going to be in, the, in heaven before the first seal is opened, which is the rider on the white horse, the Antichrist. So, if you're saved, you're going up before a lot of this stuff happens. We might get to see some more, you know, bad stuff happening before, you know, leading up to this whole thing. But my whole point is, this two-state solution is a completely evil thing, completely wicked. And uh, it's never going to happen. It is not going to happen. So, a lot of false prophets out there. A lot of people telling lies. And um, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, especially if you're Jewish, and you're in the midst of this whole thing over there, you are in a, a powder keg. <laughs> you are in a, in a volcano that is becoming more active and it's about ready to erupt. Okay? And it's going to get real bad. I would suggest looking into salvation. Not Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism is not Christianity, never has been, never will be. It's actually prophesied to be des destroyed in Revelation 17 and and chapter 18, going into chapter 18, even in chapter 19. Roman Catholicism is not Christianity. Uh, you study the, just get a King James Bible and read it. Read the New Testament, the book of John, the book of Romans, good places to start. But you can start in the book of Matthew too, if you're Jewish especially. Uh, you'll see that transition there. Um, Jesus Christ coming and, you know, offering the, 
the kingdom to the people, and they rejected him. But, uh, you know, read the, read the Bible for yourself, and you'll see that Roman Catholicism has no basis at all in Scripture, and the majority of Protestant churches don't either. And, uh, and I should say, not, maybe not the majority, nearly all Protestant churches and Protestant practices have no basis in Scripture either. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, apart from church buildings and creeds and denominations and everything else. Uh, those of us that are genuinely saved don't believe in all that stuff. So that is going to be it. I pray that you don't fall for this wicked two-state solution nonsense. And uh, if you're Jewish, you can go into the time of Jacob's trouble. You'll get to see all the signs and all the wonders and all the book of Revelation coming to pass right before your eyes and Moses and Elijah showing up to preach to you and things, the two witnesses. Um, you're going to see all that stuff. You're going to see supernatural things. Um, or you can get saved now and get out before that time gets really, really bad. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.